Uju wago shindagu migazi and dodem gazaga squadji mekag indun jiba. I had a chance to read Origin, a genetic history of the Americas, and I have to say this is a pretty good book. Uh, Jennifer Raff, who wrote the book, is a white woman, uh, and she's really writing from the perspective of her scientific training as a geneticist. Part of the work is just describing what geneticists do. Part of the work is talking about what the field says about indigenous origins in the Americas. And the third part of the book is about the ethics of genetics, genomic research, relationships with tribe and tribal peoples, and so forth. Uh, in each of these areas, I, I thought it was actually pretty interesting. With regard to the trade and the practice, I'm, I'm not a scientist by trade, and so some of it was a little bit over my head, but I did find it informative and helpful to know just how genetics, you know, geneticists do their craft. Um, I did find the information about what the genomic research and information is saying about indigenous origins to be especially helpful. You know, my elders have been saying for a long time, we didn't get here just several thousand years ago, and we didn't get here the way everybody's saying that we did. And the genetic research is confirming what my elders told me. She has basically confirmed that the DNA of indigenous people has been separated from other people for at least 16,000 years and probably for around 35,000 years. And that several years in the future, we will be able to have a more definitive answer of exactly how long that genetic pool was separated from other humans. It is very, very unlikely that there was one group of humans living in Siberia next to another group of humans in Siberia right next to each other, and they never talked to each other and never interbred and stuff like that. So that the distinction between the DNA of indigenous people in the Americas and that of those in Asia, that the separation must have happened, you know, at least 35,000 years ago um, and could be much longer than that. When you look at what the geological record was saying at that point in time, um, there were land bridges when, you know, the ocean levels were 50 meters lower than they are today because so much moisture was up in glaciers that there was a land bridge that connected North America and Asia. Uh, and, you know, the older stuff that you read says humans just walked across it, walked following, you know, woolly mammoths and things like that. At the same time, the same evidence was saying things like, you know, there were horses and camels, prehistoric ones in the Americas that were going the other way across the land bridge. And it, it raised some questions about if you're following food this way and food's walking right past you the other way, why would you move? Or even about um, other things related to the migration. Raf says, you know, the genetics doesn't say exactly how people got here. And if ocean levels were 50 meters lower than they are now, much of the genetic records are under the ocean. And so she, she thinks it is much more likely that humans moved around um, by water uh, following a kelp highway and that some of the archaeological sites confirm that kelp was a major food source for a lot of groups along the western coast. So that was pretty interesting. And uh, I, I did find what she had to say about the ethics of the discipline to be helpful as well. There's a lot to talk about there. I'm not going to use this video to debate the points so much, but she talked about how archaeologists and geneticists and scientists have used their craft to objectify and dehumanize indigenous peoples, claim ownership of their bodies, and that agency needs to lie with indigenous people in making decisions about whether or not a particular study should proceed and how. And she showed examples 
where tribes were not listened to and horrible things resulted. She also shared examples where tribes prohibited a study from proceeding and no further information was gained. And she also shares cases where tribes invited um, geneticists to do work that was useful to the tribe in confirming, you know, the identity of um, not just specific ancestors, but even of groupings for older uh, burials or things like that, so that they could reclaim their cultural and funerary um, items and patrimony and things like that. So, uh, so I thought she did a pretty balanced job of talking about the ethics. And I thought that um, the net results of what she was finding in her genetic research to be quite useful. It is a more academic book, but a good one. So I'd recommend Origin. Miigwech. Thanks for watching today. I'm Anton Troyer. Let's keep in touch. I'm active on social media and my website has lots of information on my books, speaking engagements, resources for the Ojibwe language, teachers, and more. Miigwech.